My name is Hans Fischer, and I'm an escapee of the Holocaust. I was born on March 4, 1928, five years before Adolf Hitler came to power in Germany. I grew up in Breslau, Germany, now Wroclaw, Poland, mostly under Hitler's rule, which was terrible for the Jews. Soon after Hitler came to power, the Nazis imposed anti-Jewish laws restricting Jews in certain professions, prohibiting relationships between Jews and Germans, expelling Jewish children from public schools, and labeling and isolating the Jews of Germany. I lived through Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass, when terror reigned upon the Jews of Germany and Austria on November 9th and 10th, 1938. 91 Jews were murdered. More than 1,400 synagogues across Germany and Austria were torched, and Jewish-owned businesses were destroyed. Kristallnacht was a terrifying time for Jews. On the morning of November 10th, our doorbell rang. When I opened the door, two Gestapo officers, dressed in civilian clothes, announced that they had come for my father. The officers told him to pack a small bag with some clothes, and off they went. First to the police station, and then to Buchenwald concentration camp. About ten minutes later, the doorbell rang again like mad. This time, when I opened the door, there stood two SS officers in their black uniforms and boots. They shouted at us, Where are your weapons? Where are you hiding your weapons? They barged into our home and made a mess. They opened every drawer, went into the bookcases, and threw everything on the floor, kicking anything in their sight with their boots. What a mess they made of our home, all the while yelling anti-Semitic remarks at us. About 15 minutes later, they left, leaving my mother, my sister, and me terrified. The Gestapo released my father from Buchenwald two months later because he had been a veteran of the German army in World War I. But his freedom hinged on him leaving Germany within two weeks. His destination was Cuba. My mother knew that we had to leave Germany to meet my father in Cuba. So she purchased landing permits for Cuba. On May 13, 1939, when I was 11, I boarded the steamship St. Louis with my mother and sister and more than 900 other Jewish passengers. We truly believed this would be our vacation cruise to freedom. We had a relatively good time on the St. Louis. Fortunately, my best friend from Germany was also on the ship. We didn't have a care in the world, spending our days playing, swimming in the pools, and eating good food. Captain Gustav Schroeder insisted that his crew treat the Jewish passengers with respect. The atmosphere on the ship was relaxed, and we felt liberated. Little did we know, the money that the Jewish passengers paid for the landing permits was pocketed by Manuel Benitez, Cuba's Minister of Immigration. When the president of Cuba found this out, he contacted Benitez and asked for a cut of the money. Not only did Benitez refuse, he boarded a ship for Miami, never to return to Cuba again. His actions proved to be disastrous for the Jewish passengers who were not allowed to disembark from the boat in Havana. The mood on the ship drastically changed when we were told we couldn't get off. My father and others who were already in Cuba waiting for their families to arrive were circling the St. Louis in little rowboats. My father and I could barely see each other and we definitely couldn't hear what we were yelling to each other. This was torture. Ordered out of Cuba, the St. Louis headed for the United States 
where Captain Schroeder hoped to seek refuge for the refugees in Miami. We were sure President Roosevelt would save us, but luck was not on our side and the ship was refused permission to dock. America turned us away and Canada did the same. We were so close, so very close. We could see the lights of Miami, but the world betrayed us. No one would accept the Jewish passengers. There were two heroes of the St. Louis story, Captain Schroeder and Morris Roper, the European director of the Joint Distribution Committee. Captain Schroeder was a kind and righteous man and he was determined not to return the Jewish passengers to Germany. After intense negotiations by Morris Roper, first Belgium agreed to accept some of the passengers, followed by Holland, France, and England. Captain Schroeder kept his word and safely delivered us to Antwerp, Belgium on June 17, 1939, more than a month after we had escaped from Germany. From Antwerp, we were divided amongst the four countries, with my destination being France. The tragedy of the St. Louis is that about a third of the 937 Jewish passengers were murdered during the Holocaust because they were trapped in countries that Germany had invaded. My family and I were among the fortunate ones who escaped the Nazis and eventually made our way to America, our new home. I'm often asked how I feel about coming to a country that turned me away in 39. My answer is, it wasn't the country that kept me out. It's people who did that. The lesson is that we have to learn how to act, react, and communicate with people so they understand what it is that they are really doing. The U.S. State Department issued an apology to the passengers of the St. Louis in 2012. This came too late for those passengers of the St. Louis who perished in the Holocaust. But hopefully, it will be a reminder when the world has to face such disasters again.